First, I absolutely want to thank State Representative Attic Scott. Yep. For years, we have been colleagues in the state legislature. We have fought alongside each other on many issues. And from working side by side with her, I knew this was going to be a hard fought campaign. It was. I really appreciate and respect her and her energy, as well as the energy and enthusiasm of her supporters. And if I didn't receive your vote tonight, I promise that I will work to earn your vote and your support so we can keep this seat blue in November. Because we have to win this race in the fall. We have to keep the Democratic majority in the House and ensure that Kentucky continues to have a progressive voice in Washington. I was in church on Sunday at St. Stephen. And Dr. Kevin Cosby said in his sermon, he said, politicians look to the next election. Leaders look to the next generation. This isn't about what happens in November. It's about what we want to happen after November. The divisive tactics of the extremist Republicans have made it clear. Choice is on the ballot this fall especially if the Supreme Court does what we think they're going to do. Universal pre-K and the child tax credit are on the ballot this fall. This is literally about the future of our kids. Climate change is on the battle, ballot this fall. The UN issued a report in April saying it's now or never, and we cannot send people to Washington who think the answer to that is never. Equity and equality are on the ballot this fall. Democracy is on the ballot this fall. Decency and empathy are on the ballot this fall. We saw just this past weekend exactly what the extremist and divisive rhetoric from some of our leaders can lead to. A young man murdered 10 people in a racist attack of domestic terrorism. Three and a half years ago, our community suffered a similar hate crime when a man walked into Kroger and murdered two people because they were black. Our hearts go out to the people of Buffalo. This cannot be who we are. We need to recognize that this hate and division is on the rise and we must offer a very different vision for the future of our country. We need leaders who are going to defend our values and fight for all people while being willing to listen and build coalitions that will help our community and our country move forward. When I ran for the state senate 10 years ago, that's exactly what I promised to do. That I'll go to Frankfurt, I'll fight for people, I'll defend our values, but I'll do it while building coalitions to get big things done. And that's what I did. I've been in the super minority every single day I've been in office. I got elected Democratic leader of the Senate when a guy named Bat Matt Bevan was governor. <laughs> I know what it means to lead the fights to make sure women have choice, that our teachers have their pensions, that kids have access to health insurance. But I did it while building coalitions to get big things done. I've passed 18 bills into law, and not just little things either. I passed a law that protects victims of domestic violence and human trafficking. I passed the first ever law that supports our historically black colleges and universities. I delivered on criminal justice reform, expanding voting rights, and preserving marriage equality. I know what you all probably think about Washington. I might think it too. <laughs> that it's steeped in partisanship. So is Frankfurt. I refuse to accept the notion that we can't get things done anymore. Just recently, our government partnered with private industry and sped up the creation and distribution of a vaccine that allows all of us to be here together tonight. The Democrats passed an infrastructure bill that's going to bring $6 billion to Kentucky to make sure that we have clean drinking water and that every Kentuckian have access to high-speed internet. Because when the weight of our government and the will of our people get behind something, we can solve it. And we have problems to solve. 
Every American deserves access to quality, affordable health care, including lowering the cost of prescription drugs. We can relieve the effects of inflation and deal with the supply chain issues. It's crazy that in the wealthiest country on earth, there are people who can't get baby formula right now. We've got to rethink public education. For decades, we've said it's K through 12. Why not start with pre-K? Why not offer free community and technical college so that public education goes from an earlier age to a later age? We've got to end the immediate threat that is climate change. And we can do it. And we can do it right here in Kentucky by creating good green union jobs. Everyone should feel safe in their community and in their home. That means fully funding public safety and, as we know, because we live in the city where Breonna Taylor was killed, we need to reform policing, starting with banning no-knock warrants. I refuse to accept that we can't do big things in our country anymore. We can. And November is not just an election. It's about ensuring that we have a world for the next generation to inherit. That's what I've worked to do in Frankfurt, and it's what I'll work to do in Washington. I want to thank all of you guys for being here tonight. I want to thank the men and women of organized labor. I want to thank my colleagues and other community leaders who've stepped up to help this campaign. I want, to help our, I want to thank our family, our friends, our staff, our supporters, our soccer buddies, <laughs> for all of their help. I want to thank Congressman Awesome, John Yarmouth, for his amazing leadership and service to the people of our community. Most of all, I want to thank my family. Chris and the kids have been amazing. People, all the time when you run for office, they see what you get to do. When you're in the family, it's really about what you miss. Chris and Clara and Wilson and Greta. You guys are so wonderful, and I thank you so much for being willing to sacrifice. As Chris said, she said, I really think public service is a calling. Just remember, it's not my calling. <laughs> but your support has made all the difference. If you didn't vote for me, I look forward to working with you this fall. If you did vote for us, we need your support. We need to make sure we keep this seat blue. We need to make sure Kentucky has that good voice in Washington. We'll win in November, and we will do big things for this country. Thank you, guys. <laughs>